Fucking whole day's book. Good. And as always, hello, Tanya. How are you doing today? How do you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining uh, as the first co-host with QBQ, QB Community Live's weekly sessions. I really, really appreciate it. Um, for those who are not familiar with you, would you mind introducing yourself, please? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm the founder of The Profit Constructors. We work exclusively with construction contractors in both the accounting space, and we also help them out with a lot of administrative details that... Uh, a lot of other accounting firms might not um, touch. So we do a lot of their preliminary notices, lien waivers, help them do integrations related to all that kind of stuff, workflow management. We love we love working with construction people. And I'm also the host of the Construction Junction podcast and the host of the Construction Junction Roundtable over at Roundtable. Nice. And we'll uh, dive into that a little bit of that also um, so you can tell more people about it. It's a, it's a great roundtable group. I'm actually a part of it as well and a lot of fun. So why don't we jump into our show today? I'll share my screen. We'll do our presentation here. So our very first question that we have, um, we've got two quick questions and we've actually got some stuff around construction we're going to focus on, but one to try to help with uh this was kind of an important question in our group and hey actor you can help uh, feed some stuff into the comments if you want to as well so the question was a company operates as an llc and elects a uh, sole prop filing as a uh, schedule c they received sixty two thousand dollar ppp first round ppp in 2020. at the end of eight weeks all employees were laid off except the owner employee in those eight weeks, if they used over 60% for payroll expenses and 20% on eligible non-payroll expenses, can they still get the full 62K forgiven? Now, there's a lot of different variations and variances that could be discussed with part of this. And I did kind of reach out and chat a bit with the person to one, find out 60, 20 is 80. They spent the whole money basically, right? Um, but they, they, they spent at least 60% on payroll is a key thing. Right. The big question comes into play about uh, your headcount. So since after eight weeks, they laid everybody off, I was trying to ask like, okay, why was there layoff? Is there possibly a safe harbor exemption? Right. Um, so, you know, they have to try to fill the position. So if they let everybody off, when they, they were supposed to try to get the headcount back up to get for forgiveness, but there is the possibility if their type of business was impacted and unable to open right. uh, and and they couldn't find people like you actually have to try and try to offer people jobs. You may have a, a safe harbor exemption, which would give you the ability to still get more of that loan forgiveness. Right. Um, That's still not necessarily all the way up to that 100 percent. Correct. Based on usage. Correct. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of other questions I would ask live, such as the the date of your full time headcount really became important at the end of the cover. Well, it's supposed to be end of cover period. Then it's supposed to be December 31st, but it's also based on when you're submitting for loan forgiveness. Right. Um, so Hector is saying if the payoff happens after the eight weeks and all the money was uh, layoff. Uh, after eight weeks and all the money was spent at the eight week mark, there is no issue. Okay. Even if uh, Hector, so they did the eight weeks, they did the layoffs. And when they submit X amount of time later, it doesn't matter. Um, they are still open. They just don't have the employees is, is not an issue is what you're saying. If headcount was the same, I think what yeah. you're saying is like if, if the layoff didn't happen until after the end of the eight weeks, right? Exactly. So that's good news. I'm sure she will appreciate that part of it. Yep. Uh, Hector's continuing to do amazing stuff around it. I would actually recommend, he, he's got a whole course type, it's a course on this where there have been quite a few live streams inside of it. Um, Hector, you wanna put a link in the chat for everybody so they can kind of pop into that and continue to learn? It would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, not doing it. <laughs> he said that. He's driving. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll get it. We'll get it. Right, and we'll we'll make it sure. Yeah. <laughs> Stop driving. You can put that on the Facebook group too, right? Yeah, we can. We'll put it in there. Then the next one was if I, um, it actually came from the five minute bookkeeper group. And it was, if I enter checks in QBO to be printed later, 
can I send the PDF file ready to print to the client so they can print from their computer? I thought this was a good question to kind of share real fast because when it comes to doing printing checks, because down here in the US, we use them all the time, there are a lot of different options and ways to do this. Um, Tanya, do you, what do you normally do or do you deal with checks or? What's yeah, your... I was actually a little fascinated by your answer to this. Um, mm -hmm. There's actually a joke on our team whenever our clients ask us about checks, our team usually tends to respond with, what's a check? <laughs> okay, that's a smart answer, yeah. No, we, we really often try to steer them in every bill pay um, process possible, whether that's ACH through their bank. Melio is actually becoming one, fast becoming one of our favorite platforms to use. Um, so I'll let you answer the check question because I really don't know the answer because again, we, we try to steer them away from checks as much as possible just because with the automation, with so much automation available, we feel like it, it can be done other ways and, and we'll get paid quicker. Yeah, it's a good point. So with check stock, um, part of the question was because they were using QuickBooks desktop. So I tried to find out for sure, do they have like printed pre-printed check stock, you know, their logo, all that kind of stuff on there. And can you use that the same way you would desktop to online? And the answer is yes, you can. Um, there's a couple key things to it. The three section check stock is the one that's most popular. And when I say three section, I mean, check at the top blank area bottom, where you have two sections below. So it adds the details. That's the most common, most popular and the best one to use. With QuickBooks Online, when you process checks, it just creates a PDF that has the names, the amounts, all that type of detail. So of course the check would have the company information, the address, um, routing accounting number, all of that kind of stuff. Um, usually check number, uh, does. you can have it to where you can print the check number as well, kind of your choice. Now, so if you have pre-printed checks, that's easy. The key though is when you set this stuff up, if you're gonna send it to them, the print settings change by device. So if you are using a office computer one time and a home computer a different time, you need to make sure and test out that the line out is correct for checks, that it's not too high, so forth. And keep in mind, there are settings inside of QuickBooks Online, uh, but there's also any PDF program you use, they have their own settings also. Um, so you want to make sure that you're, that everything is set up, test it three, four, five times and print on a uh, blank piece of paper, hold it up against it will help a lot. Look at it uh, with the light behind it. Hey, exactly. I have a question. What about, um, if you have, cause we have sitting in our office, I thought I might have it on my desk, but I don't, um, the check stock that is a regular check stock. It's not pre-printed. It's the blank stuff. Like you go to Staples and buy it. Right. Um, so there, I think there's a program that's still around called Print Boss, where that integrates two QuickBooks Online, and its whole functionality is to help you print different check stock, different companies. Mm -hmm. There's a different software that I use, and you know, with ever great information, don't start committing check fraud, people, please. <laughs> um, it's a check designing software you can buy from Staples for about $30 and you go through and you enter in for the company, company information, counting, routing number, um, all the details, everything else that you need to do. Now, one other thing that we have done, cause we would do payroll for clients and we would need to have signatures on it. Mm -hmm. We would have a, we had a client, we helped the client basically create a transparent signature for us. So take a blank piece of paper, like white, and then take a Sharpie, something thick and have them sign. Uh, so we can take that as a picture and then make it transparent. But we always have, if you're going to do something like that, have them add an extra dot somewhere that's not normally part of their signature. Mm -hmm. And it's a way that nobody else would recognize it. But if you're doing that, you can track the fact that it was your signature that was doing that. Yeah. Um, uh, right. Hector's saying issue with print boss is security. Most people print without proper uh, Micker grade ink. Ah. Yeah, that's important. And then the other thing I was thinking about just now when you're talking about that, because again, I I just have that uh, check stock. I think someone sent it to us as a promo. 
Um, isn't there a thing like you have like the routing number, there's a certain ACH format that they want those numbers in. So it yeah. has to be printed correctly. You can't just like type numbers onto the check. Correct. So that's where a certain program would do it that yeah. um, as Hector was mentioning in the, the comments. So there's specialized ink even to do it perfect for the micker numbers because they're magnetic. Right. Um, and the formatting is a very unique type of font for right. it to go on. It's you can't just go and find the font and stick it on there. Um, the check designer program does do that stuff. Um, we've never had an issue where it's like been kicked back for us, but we do also make sure if we're doing something like that on an account, let's say they're normally uh, having checks like 100, we do like check series 5,000. So again, it's just another variance that you can really keep track of. It's an interesting concept. We actually have a client that receives payments from one of their, one of their clients they send them the payment via a program that you log into and print a check out and then they run that check through the, so they're like just printing their clients check on their paper yeah actually so some of the different applications now um uh what was the one that i saw at scaling new heights um oh my gosh i can't think of it right at the moment it's ach printing i'll, I'll think about it in four minutes and it'll pop in my head um it, they will send an email to a client and apparently when they they print up just on normal paper it's a valid check yeah. for that works fine yeah so and this, our client hasn't ever had any problem with it so the first time you do it sucks yep it I sucks you. um so let me real quickly i was going to show real quickly where the adjustments are and then we're going to jump into some construction stuff actually cool. so if you're in here and you're trying to adjust your check settings, you can go to your gear icon and it works best when you have the noise running at the same time. Payroll settings. That's um, construction I'm, noise, that's for later. Exactly. I'm going into payroll settings because it's usually paychecks that I would do it, um, but you can, it's the same idea. If you go to go print, you can adjust it. So you're gonna come in and you need to choose what's gonna be the type you're using, whether it's two stub, one stub, so forth. Uh, whether you need to have the phone number on it, you click OK. Um, and then you're going to have your open alignment window. So you're basically going to take this thing. It's going to have to. Nice pop up blocker. <laughs> um, it's going to give you the ability here to like align certain information certain ways. So pulls this up. And maybe. <laughs> melting it's interesting i'm glad that uh, we had this conversation today because we actually run all of our banking stuff through relay and i have never purchased check stock for any of our bank accounts we have through relay so if i ever have to print a check hey at least i know i have that check stock available i have some yeah. ideas of how to do it so you would print this once you print it you would hold it up against the check make sure things align correctly and then you're going to actually answer some questions back here um, through lining like, OK, gives you a line sheet. If it's not aligned, another one pops up, has letters and uh, numbers. And you basically put in where does it have to be? Is it L is the first thing in the right place and the number five? And it will adjust it. And then you do you're going to test your print settings on uh, blank paper. Hold it up. Make sure you're good. You're golden at that point. So because the original question had to do with like sending as a PDF off to the client, but yep. you'd probably have to like run a few tests back and forth between yourself and the client before you really could come back to that. Exactly. So everything we're showing right now, you would want you would want to be able to be there or you need to have somebody that can help you there go through and this is the setup they need to do on their computer. Mm -hmm. uh, super, super important. Um, and once you've got the settings good, you're good to go. Yep. Um, so hopefully that helps out. Now let's go here. So let's talk some construction accounting stuff right now as well. What do you say? Sounds fun. That's my, I, that's my jam. I have like a card hat even on my desk. So uh, You should be wearing it right now, by the way. <laughs> I know, right? Well, I, what was I thinking? There we go. <laughs> Perfect for the rest of the time. It's great. <laughs> All right, so screenshot of that. Um, I, I will in a second. <laughs> For to start off here, uh, so what type of construction clients do you use? QuickBooks Desktop versus QuickBooks Online. 
Um, what, yeah. What's your input onto it? Um, it's interesting because, of course, we've been doing this. We've had the profit constructors for five years. And from the beginning, my whole goal was to get construction clients off of desktop into the cloud. That's been my goal for five years. And it's fascinating because even now, so, you know, how long are we into this journey of QuickBooks Online even being a thing? It's older than our five years of existence. And people still to this day will be like, you're doing construction accounting in QuickBooks Online? And we are. So there's always limitations to any program. That's the first thing they always start by saying to people like, Desktop has its limitations too. There's no perfect accounting software, right? Um, but if you have to have certain like certified payroll reports, that probably is like the one last lingering yep. thing that we can't easily quickly do in QuickBooks Online. Although I'm starting to find there's some solutions for that even out in the cloud. Um, a friend of mine just told me the other day about something called Payroll for Construction. So it's a new payroll app that can run a lot of like union reporting, certified payroll reporting. Um, so yeah, we're looking into that too. But really certified payroll has probably been the one last lingering issue that we have found as a pain point we can't solve for easily in QuickBooks Online. And certified payroll is a pain in the rear. It is. Yeah. Absolute pain in the rear. Yeah. Um, it, now- you know, It depends on where you are, what region you're in, what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into the certified payroll. World. So now this is the area where the hybrid uh, accounting method, right? That you can easily use possibly a cloud app that still integrates to desktop. And sometimes that's a great way to do it because you can keep the client out of the books and keep them in the other part is, is a positive thing. Just depends on the workflow. Um, that's true. First, can, I will say too, though, that I'm struggling right now with a lot of the connectivity between yep. desktop and any cloud-based app. Like there's just so much co connectivity issue, whether you're connecting through web connector, sometimes you're like, <laughs> oh, it integrates. You just upload this IIF file. I'm like, oh, yeah, so. In the chat, I'd love to hear from people who who is still using desktop as a regular basis in your company um, and, or like what percentage? How many people are desktop and online? Like give us some uh, feedback on the, in the chat, of course. Um, so then with QuickBooks Online, I find QuickBooks Online projects does a great job for smaller specialty type construction. Yep. Uh, but if you are, if you ever get into the, when you start really needing change orders and you need to be getting signatures on that, um, it's larger jobs. You can do some progress invoicing, but not tons you need to grow out of that into something different. It's kind of where I would go away from QBO. What do you think? Yeah, maybe not necessarily go away from QBO, but maybe what you're saying is like go away from QBO standalone. As, uh, yes, yeah. adding on a third party basically exactly. at that point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for sure. I think the exact same thing. Like if you just are a small subcontractor or specialty trade, you can really run everything through projects quite nicely. But Again, there's no perfect software. The one drawback that still to this day kind of makes me go, come on guys, let's, let's just let's just get this one little thing in there is that ship to address in project, yes, right? Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna ask you another question that's a little more specific. When we talk about construction, there's so many different types of construction. Could you, um, can you kind of share if there's certain, certain categories of construction, which ones would be in desktop and there's certain kind of categories would be in online instead. Yeah. Again, certified payroll is kind of like the one sticking point. I feel like I could, so talking about categories, I typically break it down between four and they kind of cross as far as those four go, meaning residential versus commercial and general contractor versus subcontractor. So those can like cross, you see what I'm saying? But yep. Uh, but at the same time, residential can run very differently from commercial and GCs have a lot more that they need to manage typically than like subcontractors or specialty tradesmen. So um, a lot of GCs still feel like they need QuickBooks desktop because of the way that they're just used to running like customers and jobs. They have their item lists that they're very, like, a lot of times they're using the item list for their list of phases, which can be, you know, 40, 50 phases long, right? So a lot of them are just really comfortable in that space with having all that information, but we've successfully transitioned general contractors even 
um, into QuickBooks Online. But again, I do think, like you said, there's some limitations that might make it where they can transition to QuickBooks Online, but you're going to need to integrate that with a third-party app for them to have all of the full set of features that they need to run their business. Which takes us to our next question. Uh, QBO projects versus third-party apps. And so, and feel free to name which apps you like. Yeah. Kida loves your hat, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Um, actually, a friend of mine named Richard Ropa sent me this one. I have another one, but this is, this is my newest one. Um, yeah, so third-party apps. Um, QuickBooks projects versus like Noify, in terms of how Noify and QuickBooks projects looks, I think when you first log into the dashboard, they actually look very similar um, because you're getting a lot of good information regarding like revenue and expenses. Yep, exactly. So this is like this dashboard right here kind of looks like what you see when you open up the projects dashboard, right? However, once you start digging into Noify, there's so many more features here, as I think you were alluding to earlier, Matthew. Yep. Um, that a contractor really can use to manage things like sending out proposals and getting signatures on them, um, creating AIA style documents right here in the program, um, being able to track, um, you know, kind of whip style reporting. So you can see if you have it all turned on in here, like uh, committed costs, not just actual costs that have happened on the job. Um, so there's, and then they're reporting, which they're like, we're working with us right now to build out some even greater reporting than they already have, but there's just so many full featured things in here. Um, so Noify, of course, is one that, uh, you know, compared to QuickBooks projects. It's a lot more. It's a lot I, more. I love, so the data I'm showing in here, this is a sample company thing I had set up a while back. It's all fake data and it was me playing around. So it's not the best representation or the best demo, but it, it does give you an idea of how it, what it looks like, feels like, so forth. Um, with Nofi, I love the fact that the contracts, you can have them set up basic templates where you can still add extra details on. Change orders is a huge thing. Construction companies, I, I mean, it seems like 30, you know, if you don't have change orders, you're, you're losing money left and right every single time. For sure. And I just want to give a huge shout out to how Noify handles this, something that mm -hmm. I love that's really actually helped to train our clients to have better habits. Noify is not set up to actually move any type of a change order over into your budget or have you actually start really being able to do work on it if it's not an approved change order. So you either nice. have to send it out and get a signature or mark it as approved within the Noify thing before you can really like use it in any way. And I love that about, like I said, it's really helped train our clients to have better habits in terms of, hey, we sent that change order out maybe a week ago and they're asking us on the job site to do the work today. Should we do it? Nope, they haven't sent it back with the signature. Let's let's hold out for that signature. And they make it to where you can, they handle the signature online part inside of it, which is awesome. Yep. Dan, good to see you as well. And Katrina, hello to see you on Facebook there. Um, another little nuanced thing that I'll move past this one is I love the fact that they've set up the ability to actually, um, you can get job permits yes. from inside of here. I mean, that's a pretty cool concept. You yeah. can schedule out, you can do service jobs with this as well, or you can do contract time and material jobs, so forth. Yep. Um, yeah, there's so, like full featured scheduling and time tracking in here too. So yes, whereas absolutely. you can like maybe do time tracking with projects, you're not able to do full featured scheduling kind of with, you can even see almost what looks like a Gantt chart in their yep, scheduling yep. if you have their job board enabled. So yeah, there's a lot that is Pretty amazing. Time tracker scheduling. Um, absolutely right. Uh, and then people can use it from their phone as well. I mean, we could do a whole thing on, on yes. Nofi, but we should I show other parts of it as well, of course. So in comparison to QuickBooks Online and projects, I mean, hey, this is great because you can get quicker reporting, but this is nowhere near as deep or as like detail oriented right. um, at all. And um, a huge thing about uh, QuickBooks Online and Noify working together, there's a two-way sync, which is huge because if I create a bill in Noify, but then I have the backend accounting department that's receiving payments, you know, the project manager has created the bill out in Noify, the accounting department receives yep. the payment in QuickBooks and all of that's talking to each other. It's very nice. 
there's a great workflow capability that if you're using something like a DEX or a hub doc and yes. you're pulling expenses in that way because the two-way sync, you could have receipts, everything else, grab it, pull it in since it'd be a billable expense. They also integrate with T-Sheets, Clock Shark. Uh, they, so all these different time tracking, which you can then take that information into QuickBooks Online for payroll, ADP for payroll. So there's a whole eco sphere around all of that. For sure. I actually wrote an article a couple of years ago about this idea that, you know, if you're actually really integrating your apps well, there's you're not losing any functionality between QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. That's a, a great way to say it. You're, that, that's the whole reason, right? I mean, the beauty of cloud-based accounting, for the longest time, we always had to take and we would shove a company into an accounting platform and try to get whatever we could out of it. Right. But now we have the ability to actually custom design the accounting around the business yes. and make sure they're getting what they need. Which is yeah, the I think in that article, I even said you can actually do this a lot better and have your accounting department function better and, and work better alongside the field if you get these integrated properly. So Hector's asking, what if the bill entered in QBO needs to be job costed? Um, Hector, you uh, and in QBO try project or items are not entered the way Noify can understand it. Um, so you, uh, with um, the note for Noify, if you're doing the job costing aspect of it, you're doing all of that inside of Noify itself. Uh, you can enter bills and have expenses in QuickBooks Online, and it would be able to get pulled and sucked into Noify to show um, as billable expenses so it gets tagged in. And then you would have the ability to run your different reports. Um, job, uh, where am I going here? How much money you're heading for? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out myself. But yeah. Uh, so the answer is like, if it's a simple, if it's, so if you're, let's say like an hour case, we might pull something in from HubDoc. If it's a simple one line item and that customer matches up to the customer, the sub customer that's showing in your QuickBooks list of customers, it will pull it right in. If you have some invoices that have multiple customers, it gets a little tricky. Yeah. My data here is a little too old to be able to show it right off the bat. Um, but what if you use projects or sub, uh, a project or sub customers. So if you're doing that, which means you're not using Noify then because you wouldn't use projects and Noify at the same time. Um, I've never tried to even do that necessarily. You could do sub customers uh, from I, that I side. Actually, yeah, I know exactly the answer to that question because we actually transitioned someone out of projects into Noify. Okay. Um, and yeah, you. it was an interesting transition because we actually had some of their projects still on projects and then we just started fresh in Noify. Um, but yeah, you, it will not pull any information back and forth in and out of the projects module. Everything runs through sub customers once you're hooked up to know about it. Good to know. Very good to know. Yep. Um, okay, so now the other one we were kind of talking about a bit was Builder Trend. Where did that go? Um, so what do you know about Builder Trend? Uh, I know that they have a super, I think you used the word, just the word the other day, a super sexy client portal. So like if you're oh, a construction company and you want your clients to see something really good and you want your clients to do some marketing for you, um, you have the ability within Builder Trend for your clients to like push marketing out to like their social media that has your stuff that you're pulling. It's pushing. amazing. Yeah. It, it's really cool. I So the thing is, they don't do a lot of job costing. So if what you're looking for is to have like QuickBooks online and not do any job costing there, and you really want to do a lot of job costing outside of QuickBooks online, don't look for a lot of that in Builder Trend. It's very limited. Really? I mean, so from what I remember with Builder Trend, my biggest challenge was with any of these, it's usually implementation. Builder Trend is so big and so many functions or options it's like this huge database of different fields you can turn on and off and everything else um, that it, I didn't realize it couldn't do as much of that aspect of the, sorry, go ahead. no, of the job costing. So that's good to hear about. It, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. See Hector's even saying, I found it more of a CRM than an accounting program. It's very, very true. You're not going to get a whole lot of job costing capability. However, um, they just purchased in February, right? Co-construct which had much better um, job costing ability than Builder Trend ever did. So I'm very anxious to see how that merge is going to go. What I would love to see, if I had my druthers, 
I would love to see builder trend become more like co-construct in the job costing and phasing and all of that kind of space. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see co-construct become much more sexy, you know, so like if we could blend it where it's like beautiful customer portal blended with beautiful job costing and phasing and all of that, that will be really cool if that's how that merge ends up going. Maybe that's why they did the acquisition. So that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cause I actually called a uh, builder trend one time we were really trying to get a good job costing report for a client and, and it's kind of spelled out what I was looking for. And the, the person I was talking to who was their account manager was kind of like, Hmm. Yeah. We don't do that. <laughs> Interesting. So, but yeah. I'm excited for the co-construct integration. I haven't looked at builder trend for many, many years. And it was a client that wanted to start to implement it and it didn't get very far. The only thing I really remember the most, and I wish I could show it again, their client portal is just so beautiful and the ability, the way it looks and inviting to clients to be able to see what's going on inside there. So you guys are right. It's more of a CRM. That's um, why we've had a hard time getting some of our clients to really see what they're lacking in, in uh, the job passing. Like they just keep pushing us to make the job passing better. And we're like, but you, you're working with this program. We have to do the best we can. We're trying to pull whatever we can out, but it's not, not pulling out what we need. Uh, so there is, um, Nancy's asking, do you now combine Noify with Builder Trend? So Builder no, Trend's expensive, isn't it? Builder Trend's expensive, but here's the other thing I will say about that, Nancy. Noify will even tell you themselves that their sort of target market is uh, specialty trades and subcontractors. They're not really looking to do what Builder Trend's looking to do. Builder Trend's target market is like, residential home builders, remodelers, people who want that sexy client portal, people, yeah, people who want to see, it's it's mostly residential and maybe a little bit on the commercial side, but if you really need clients to be able to like pick finishes, um, see pretty pictures, be able to log in all the time and see what's going on with their work, that's where you're gonna be going into the builder trend side of things. Okay. Whereas with Noify, it's much more about like, um, it's just about project management. You don't need your clients to see all these fancy pictures. You might need to get RFIs and things like that, but it's but it's much more focused on like, I'm the plumber. I came in to do underground rough in and trim and we, we can bang that out for you and get all your billing out to you exactly the way you want to see it. Nice. Now, another benefit of Noify, which we didn't really talk about is their ability to create like template items. So if you're a painter and uh, you're, you, have certain things like a kitchen painting, a bedroom painting, whatever you'd want to do, you can create these little template bundles that make it a little bit easier to create estimates on the fly, on the go. Um, you can have it figured out where it's based on a per square foot or per whatever unit aspect also. Um, so that's, again, another major benefit, I would say, against any of the other ones we've talked about there so far. Oh yeah, um, I love the templating feature. It's fantastic. Hector and, was saying that he found Builder Trend to be a good addition for QuickBooks Desktop, but not for QBO. And I, if I had to guess what Hector's encountered there, I would say it has more to do with the fact that, again, if you've set up the items uh, and you're using items really well in QuickBooks Desktop, you have access to a lot of really good job costing reports. So if you can pull the items in correctly, whereas in QuickBooks Online, if you want to do a lot of that budget versus actuals, budgets versus estimates reporting, you had to you kind of have to finagle that, and you're not going to be able to pull the right information in from builder trend. Uh, since you brought up budgets versus actual, do you know of a way when you're doing the reporting on a budgets versus actual, if you if you filter down to like one divi one class, right? Mm -hmm. Can you print the reports where it only has the totals column only? No. Damn. Okay. I, yeah, I I don't love that, right? Because what you're talking about it was for a visual for people, no matter what, whether it's by job or class, it's going to show you like everything across okay. with like, here's the top level customer. Here's your job. Here's your one class. And it's going to like have like multiple columns going across where it's trying to total those things out. Even if the totals are zero because you filtered down to one class. Yeah. I, we have one client that I was just doing reporting for yesterday that we have, and mm -hmm. I have to go in and modify them in Excel, but either here nor there. So now next question is about AIA billing. Um, what do you recommend for AIA billing? What do you like? I, I love Noify. No they're, <laughs> they're, yeah, they're at the top yeah. of the list for AIA billings. Um, and they do the right format. They are, it, it, it's yeah. good. Yeah, they know, they understand within Noify uh, things like stored materials. Um, they understand retention. 
the one thing I will say is we still haven't found a great answer for retention. Let's say that, uh, and this happens every once in a while, like the general might lower retention from 10% down to five, maybe at the end of the job as a specialty trade contractor, that's annoying anyway. Um, and then it's really hard to filter that through uh, Noify, but they have a way to do it. So they understand a lot about it and um, give you the really good tools to be able to do it. Beautiful. Um, I, I would agree. The best one I've seen so far really is Noify. I haven't worked with other ones that do the same, that really do much with AIA. I don't, I don't know which other ones do. Uh, so now, not any of that, okay. because like I said, like co-construct and builder trend, those guys are really chasing the residential market. So there's not yeah. an AIA in that. So, so on a little bit of a different aspect of it as well, there are other specialty type. Um, it's not really exact construction, but it kind of falls into some of this stuff like jobber, uh, house call pro, um, service fusion. Um, what else? Uh, service monster. Um, I've got videos on some of these on my YouTube channel, but these are all like more specialized type. Uh, some of them have some companies, if it's like a specialty construction, like a plumber, maybe you have to have a maintenance fleet and you need to be able to have dispatch capabilities yep. would be something completely different versus like, again, a no if I were, it's, it's. So I can kind of step those up. Yeah, please. Comparison. Like, so. I think jobber would be like for entry level, like very simple, easy to use, makes it easy to dispatch, easy to keep track of. Um, probably the next step up from that would be house call pro. Um, okay. And then I think like top of the line, really good. They know what they're doing would be service Titan. Interesting. Um, are there any other ones that you would like to share or recommend about or talk about that we haven't already done so? In terms of uh, the service side of things or just any? Any, anything construction. So are, what are your other secret weapons in construction? Uh, I will say that as far as time tracking, we absolutely love Clock Shark because they were really built around the idea of gathering time for construction and they understand a lot of construction needs when it comes to time tracking. Um, so like they're geofencing and they're, you're being able to like monitor things by job. They actually give you the ability to budget by hours on a job, which is really a nice thing to be able to do because that's super helpful when you're trying to figure out what happened, what, what went wrong or, you know, what went right on a job. You can budget by hours. So I like Clock Shark. Um, I have others that I've heard of and we've never really played with in, in our space, our red team, build ops. I mean, there's a lot out there um, that you could look into, but you know, there's just so it's much. It's hard to stay on top of all of them, right? Yeah. So that's why we have community. Uh, Hector had a uh, question about change order tracking. Yes. So the I, I there's a way that I came up with for trying to deal with change orders um, if you're using QBO and projects. Um, it's a little bit, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but you're able to set up where you're doing progress invoicing. And I've got it in my course thing, the course I created on some of the stuff to that yeah. kind of walks you through it. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up real quick. While you're pulling that up, I'll tell what we do typically too. So nice, will, please. Yeah, we will typically set up um, at the beginning of any project, we will set up if we're using projects, let's say, you know, because he's with no app. So typically then we'll have that client in projects um, and we'll set up an estimate at the beginning of that project that's tied to that project and we will create the initial estimate. And then we will just add lines for every change order that's called out. This is this change order and this is the amount. This is this change order and it's the amount. We also, because we're typically setting up budgets versus actual reporting for our clients, every time a change order is added. So at the beginning of the job, we will have created the estimate and a budget, which you can um, break out by customer and project. So we will break out one budget for that project and add the original estimate. And then every time there's a change order, we will go in and add that change order to that budget to keep track. Now, the limitation to that is because of the way QBO does budgeting, you only have, it's a, it's an annual budget. So you only have 12 buckets of things that you can add as you go across, right? And the other limitation is it's a budget by chart of accounts accounts, not by products and services. So if you wanted to budget based on like, you have an item or you have like a product or service set up out in the product or service list that you're calling a phase of the job. Again, going back to my plumbing illustration, yeah. underground rough and trim, you can't budget by those products and services items. You have to budget by your chart of accounts accounts. So there's limitations in that, but that's how we would do it. 
I need to review that again with you after this to evaluate how I was doing it to because yeah. I wasn't even taking into consideration any of the budgeting aspect of it. So that that's yeah. uh, most of our clients want to see their budgets versus actuals. And again, the only way we can show them that is on we're, we're breaking it down by their cost of goods sold accounts, but at least they can still see it. One of the ideas I had actually for using projects as well, especially like for advanced, if you I'm sorry, using QuickBooks Online Advanced is using a drop down custom field to track different phases of a project, mm -hmm. since you only get the completed, incomplete, closed in projects, you can use a custom field to be able to add on to different transactions. So you can, uh, you know, really track profitability by the different phase also. Have you started doing that at all? I haven't, but I love that idea. I want to talk to you about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I love that. So it sounds like your idea may have actually been, it's probably better than the one I was coming up with, but let me pull this up and uh, show you. In answer to Hector's next question on that, do you ever track profitability on the specific change order only or know it? It depends, Hector. So in the situation I was just talking about, we would be tracking total project profitability on that budget versus actual screen. The only way we've ever tracked independent change orders is by setting them up as separate projects. It has been done in situations where it was incredibly necessary, but we've had to set it up as an entirely separate project. Although I like what uh, Matt was saying about setting it up as a, as a different estimate. But again, even if you're looking at it on the project screen, you can't really track the profitability necessarily on each individual estimate. So, so uh, where it came to, what I was trying to figure out is how can you do like time and material jobs with the progress invoicing inside of QuickBooks Online? Mm -hmm. And the reason that becomes difficult and why this kind of ties back to like change orders is if you've got an estimate already in QuickBooks Online, you're supposed to create the invoices immediately off of what's on that estimate, right? Mm -hmm. um, so came up with an idea, of course, of doing like create an estimate uh, for project with phase bundles. Um, each phase would basically have something where it's like materials, labor, shop supplies, client retainer. Uh, estimate should reflect total expected for the entire project. Um, create a progress invoice. So once the estimate's been created, uh, I'm sorry, accepted, you'd go in, create the progress invoice and record the client deposit that gets the job started. Get down a for record it. This is whole step by step, of course. Then a credit memo is going to be uh, recorded equal to the amount of the deposit. This credit memo will be applied to future invoices with the time and materials for that phase. This, by kind of going through this process, the thought process is you can create inside of the project new invoices that would each be a change order. And what I would do is create a custom form that says change order on it. You know, you can do your custom invoices and, and custom estimates and such. Yeah. Re do your own personal update of one where it says change order has the right language and now you can use it as a change order to to get somebody to sign on and such that's um, great i love that and that's really so i was looking at it entirely from the standpoint of like a fixed price job and this is more for tnm so two great answers uh, for two totally different types of projects that's fantastic so uh well, i don't know if my answer was great i'm over here like two, I, more it, more. two great answers because that's so amazing <laughs> So before we end here real quick, I'd like to ask you to tell us more about uh, construction, your construction roundtable, please. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, roundtable is such an amazing thing. I, I would not be lying if I said it's really changed the way that our firm does things. Um, we really wouldn't be where we are without roundtable. And the exciting part is I get to lead a construction junction roundtable now. So it's all about construction. So roundtable itself is a group of uh, accounting firm owners uh, and other people in the accounting space who get together and just share ideas, um, talk about things important to the accounting world, like how can we grow our firms, asking questions like we did today where Hector was, you know, bouncing questions off of us. How would you do this? How would you do that? Um, we do all of that kind of thing. And so with Construction Junction, if you uh, come and join us, we meet two times a month um, and talk in that construction space. And some of it is just kind of like guided like we did today, where it's like, okay, we're going to talk about these subjects. And other times it's like, okay, everybody bring your questions to the table. Let's let everybody who's here speak to your questions and let's find answers for everybody that's coming. So we have kind of both, both sides of that coin happening there. 
And then also because it's a part of Richard Ropa's larger roundtable group, everyone who joins also gets access to his one topic roundtables, which are about anything and everything pertaining to running your business also. So, uh, and outside of the construction realm. So it could be things like pricing for your firm, um, different apps that are available. So, you know, one app that comes to mind that we recently did and one topic was Financial Sense, which is a great, um, you know, workflow management program for accounting firms. So all of that comes along. And then we have a great um, community of people that's talking all the time out in a Slack platform. So much engagement happening there, so much help uh, that people are giving there. It's a fantastic um, place to be. Love it. And I'm actually a member there, love coming in and spending time uh, collaborating with people. We talk about anything that's construction related, obviously. So it may be something like sales tax, maybe it has to do with payroll, certified payroll. Um, there's so many, when you choose a niche, there are so many things you still have to learn about the niche um, yeah. that you can get some help with all of that. Yeah, and one of the guys that's in our roundtable the other day said every black belt in karate still has trainers and coaches around him, right? So like we're we're just helping each other along because there's just like today I was like, oh Matt, I want to talk to you about that. I want to talk about. We all know things other people don't. So contact information put up on the screen. This downloadable PDF will have all that information as well, um, so people can reach you with your company, Profit Constructors. Um, I did want to share real quickly in our group, uh, Nancy had basically posted that they're looking for somebody in the Newport, Rhode Island area that is able to do QBO, uh, go into a client's area and work with QBO. So if you're looking for clients in that area, reach out to Nancy uh, there. They can connect you and see if they can get you a new client possibly. And then I wanted to share quickly um, a couple different things that are coming up. Uh, Linda is actually she had posted something about this this week that she has with her accountants law lab. It's a specialized group that's focused for law firm accounting. They do an open forum on Fridays um, that you can go into. There's a link for it so you can check that out. Hector is actually doing something as well. He's got coming up on the 28th, 29th, uh, talking about unlocking benefits of payroll services. And you can register for that also. Um, it's going to be a great session as always. Hector's awesome at teaching other people, right? Awesome. So, Rockstar. and then, yeah, exactly. Last but not least, for next week, our special guest host next week is going to be Kelly Parks. We're going to be bouncing around. I want to share people's bring a lot of different people and share different opinions. I know that Kelly and I are likely to go off on tangents talking about workflow. We'll answer some questions from the group as well, but um, definitely gonna have some workflow conversations during that period. Uh, love Kelly, I can't, I hope I don't have to miss that. I'm gonna go see what's on my calendar. Awesome, any last words for the week? Oh, I, I'm, I actually have to run out of here and go help my daughter get her uh, first job. She's got an appointment set up to go do nice. some stuff for her first job, so it's exciting. Well, on that note, here's wishing you all a very successful week. Thanks, guys. Thank